What's going on, everybody? I have a viewer submission. So for a while, I've done these key reviews where I look at people's keys who send them to me. We talk about what goes good, what doesn't go good. Uh, just little tidbits about the key or things that can be improved upon or just praised. So first, we have one of our viewers, Liz, or Goth Bean from Area 52. She is over 2K now. And if we're looking at the build, she's playing Night Fae, the Naya, which is, if you're playing Night Fae, you're gonna, you're gonna be playing Naya. It's just, it's the best, it's, it's too good. It's too good to pass up. Like Naya is the way to go if you're gonna be Night Fae, if you didn't know that. Uh, gear is pretty good. I mean, you're gonna be playing the same stuff. What do we got here? This is the one you want. Wow. So best in slot rings right there. That's awesome. Uh, I don't really like this. I don't like two non-strength trinkets. So strength is huge for us. It gives us parry rating. It gives us damage. It gives us defense. It gives us armor. It gives us so many things and you're missing out on 300 strength or more by having two of these um, especially at these keys of like 20s strength is just so huge uh, I don't really like that you have zero strength on any of this um, if it's working for you great but there's a lot of untapped potential by using just so much of this defensive kind of stuff that isn't really needed unless you're doing like 30s. And even then I might argue you need something with strength because strength does so much for us. Um, of course, Gavel, amazing. This build, using Heartbreaker and Foul Bulwark and then Wraith Walk. This is very, very, um, this is very suspicious of playing the same kind of build as Metro. This is very much what Metro runs, very close. And that's fine. I mean, he's very defensive first, which is good. I mean, that's kind of like an old school players kind of thing, but, um, Unfortunately, Season 3 and Season 4 are very much based around the higher the Dancing Rune weapon uptime, the more offense and defense you have. And this is not really lending to that. Like, 10% overall health at any given time plays completely away from the playstyle of the tier set. So tier set general rule of thumb for tier set is we need to have five oh sorry not tier set just let's let's scrap that just blood decay in general the general rule always was you need to have five or more bone shield stacks to get ossuary so when you death strike it costs less and you always need to be five or a higher so this would give you five percent life or higher so if you stayed at ten per, if you stayed at ten bone chill stacks, you would be at ten percent extra HP. So at the top end, this is giving you ten percent increased HP, which combined with the codex is not bad. But now with dancing rune weapon lasting as long as it does and having two swords, one one Maro rend gives you nine bone chill stacks. So we are perfectly content going down to one bone shield stack and then Mara rending. Uh, so this is very in counterintuitive to that play style of riding as low as possible of bone shield stacks. So that way every GCD is towards hard strike, keeping dancer and weapon alive. So I would say this is the least value of all of the talents on that row, but if you like it and it's working for you as a 20, definitely do it. You know, like I said, Metro plays this. And I mean, that's for sake of not running, wanting to, um, 
you know, run Blood Tap, which would give you a lot more free charges for Dancing Rune Weapon, but it is another button to manage. And then this tier again gives us so much in the way of runic power that this is kind of redundant as well. Tombstone is better served because Tombstone can knock 30 seconds off a of Dancing Rune Weapon every single time you use it. So over the course of a dungeon, you've gotten however many free Dancing Rune Weapons off of that. Yep. We're looking at what she's timed here. Junkyard is definitely bread and butter there. For pretty much everybody, it's a really easy key. Otherwise, you know, we're getting there. We're getting them done. So that's enough of me. That's enough for me, like, shitting on the build here. To me, to me, there's a lot of things right here. I don't like this, and I don't like this for tier set in the world we live in especially at these lower keys so like 20s is just too low to be playing this insanely defensive with no strength that's in my opinion of course okay let's look at her key so she told me she forgot to record at the very beginning but this is still like really close to the very beginning 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 so this is a junkyard the normal route is you come up, you can't see my mouse past this, right? But there's a hill up here. People usually pull two things there. They get two bots. They come down here. They deal with all this stuff to get as many scrap bots as possible. So let's just play it. I'm going to mute it. Okay. Or scrap bots. Um, what are they called? The These little bots, these little these little guys right here. There's one right there. This is interesting. Um, I guess this is a good route. I usually go up and into the little mountain cave and go there first because there's more bots in there. There's also one sneaking inside that little pipe. Um, if we turned around over here, there's a little pipe. There's one There's one in, tucked away in there too, if you didn't know that. And three different bots. Yeah, so you can see them in there, right there. He's a the haste bot. So on this key, junkyard, everybody takes haste for their affix. You want haste, 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 haste. Because that bot does like a chain lightning. Right there, you just saw that, the chain lightning, right there again. It scales off of your haste. It will be your top damage in the key by far. Just that scrap bot, just that bot. The more haste you have, the better. So this key very, very much incentivizes getting as many of those Dreadlords down as possible to get that haste stack way up. Um, of course, with this key, it's kind of open-ended. If you can go to the slime place first, that's usually the best because that's the most bots you can get at once. And then, you know, some give you max HP, some give you, you know, chain lightning and 10% increased haste um, another one gives you I believe armor I really don't I really don't know actually I'm not as good at this game as people think I am for this wing we have to kill the three monstrosities all right so let's look at the core usage of her just general rotation we want to AMS that okay that's good she didn't really need to run there. She could have just AMS and been fine. What that giant swirly is going to do to us is it's going to give us a lot of reduced healing, which can suck, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal, and a healer can dispel us. But AMS is great there. If we're looking at overall UI, I like what is shown. Um, I like a lot of these cooldowns being grayed out right now. And then when they come up, she's using them. That is awesome. You have no idea how far ahead you are just, just using your cooldowns. You'd be surprised how many blood DKs, especially like because they're really good right now, they're like flavor of the month, people don't use them. 
even with them being as good as they are with dancing and weapon, I'm seeing a lot of blood decays fold like lawn chairs. Alright, so we're trying to keep dancing and weapon up. We have some runes, we're using them for dancing and weapon. That's good. Okay, um, I kind of wish we had a way to see, I mean, maybe you're good with this without that, but I wish we had a way to track when Death and Decay is back because, um, you know, rune regeneration and everything is like good inside D and D, so Night Fae in particular, we really want to prioritize having Death and Decay up, like all the time. That's part of the. That's kind of what makes a uh, Night Fae hard, is you have to prioritize Death and Decay like all the time. You have to hard cast it all the time. So we have Lichborn up, IVF. Now, if you didn't know this. You cannot Lich Born and then also Soul Shape. So that's killed me a few times. I had Lich Born up and then tried to Soul Shape away and died. Okay. Deciding what we pull there. But I like this. This is good. There's an extra bot there, but if no one's died, I mean, there's just, there's bots everywhere, so. As long as people aren't dying, they're going to get a lot out of this. I like that uh, Nightborn little elf avatar there on your chat. That's cool. I have a Nightborn mage. I really like Nightborn. It's really cool. Okay, so we're lusting. We're going ham Sammy. Watch now for swirlies, standing with our little whole refresher bot thing. This is good. You've got a little thing that tells you when to explode your ghoul. Does she explode it? She does not. I'm sure she does it throughout the key. I'll, I'll kind of keep track of that. Um. I don't have sound on for your key, but I would suggest having a sound cue happen when it's time to explode your ghoul too. It's helpful uh, just to get that extra damage. And it also heals you too, so it's a good way to like stave off a death strike if you just explode your ghoul for 20% of your HP. So we're tracking a lot of really nice things here. UI wise, this makes sense. It's pretty minimalistic. It's interesting that um, just a lot of the group damage happening, your healer is actually healing more than you are. Just cause this boss, you know, the group wide damage of this. I like that you're tracking a lot of your team's cooldowns. So one thing that happens a lot, like there's this transition that'll happen um, where when you start to do higher keys, you start pulling around what cooldowns you see. So if we're looking at my mouse right now and you're, you're taking inventory of what is up. What's up, man? Word up. <laughs> you're taking inventory of these things. And you're like, hmm, how big of a pull can I do right now? And as you, if you play with the same people, you get kind of a sixth sense for that, sixth, sixth synth for that. But if you don't, foolproof, oh my god, dude, I can't talk. Foolproof way of that is to check people's cooldowns and be like, okay, we got some cooldowns. My nuts are huge. I'm gonna pull big here. And Nothing is going to brick a key faster than doing a big pull and then being like, what? I lived it. Why can't you guys? And then like they had nothing up. You know what I mean? So these are things that can really help. 
AMC is a very good candidate right here. When he does his little beacon thing. One thing I'd love to see here is just the damage types weak aura. Just so you can see what kind of damage is coming in. It's so like this this thing here. Oh, she does AMC. Nice. That's real good. Good job. I like that. Oh, I like I like that she work. Sorry. So scrap bots, when they do the cloud, we just got to back them up. So not the gyro scrap, but the exhaust. We got to watch out for exhaust. I wouldn't back them up into the doorway. Yeah, because you're going to backpedal into extra mobs. I would say backpedal over here away from everything else. But it worked out for you in this in this run. There's a bunch of extra stuff that just came. I don't know if you did that or not. Good aim, good grip. That was a that was a good Gorfins. So a lot of things you do good here. You're very you're very in touch with what's happening in the pole. Um, a lot of people who are like just starting to break into twenties. You know, they see something like this happen or like something small starts to go wrong and they immediately like, I don't know, start panicking. And then like a lot of those things to think about just go right out the window. Bone shield management is good. I can see that you ride high on bone shields because of foul bulwark. Makes sense. All right. Another crawler. So again, AMZ is a really great candidate here the next time it goes off. Right here. So like when it's about to start is when you'd want to AMC that. But obviously she understands that because she's done it before. All right, so we're fighting Zulgamux now. AMZ can help here. IBF can help here. Um, AMS can help here a lot. Anything you can do to stop her healing. So like right now, Blood Siphon, boom. That's when we want to have AMZ come out. You know, any kind of absorb. So, like, if she's about to cast it, you can even death strike twice, just like boom, boom, for blood shield. Blood shield, if you didn't know, absorbs, like, blood shield will also reduce her healing. Your plater profile is nice and clear. I like that. I say it's, there's like, the spell bar of it is really big, which as my personal preference, it's a bit distracting, but that's just me. Um, you know, it, it definitely looks like it works great. So we're going to want to AMS this real soon. Not this one, but okay. We probably don't need even, even need to worry about it unless she casts it. AMS, AMS, AMS. See, she just got a bunch of shield there. If we would have AMS that, she would have gotten like nothing. In a 20, these things don't really matter that much, but higher keys, they will matter a lot. Shaman? He's been, he's been freaking dead forever. Oh, he's DC'd. Dang, look at that. Look at the nuts on Goth Bean. She is like, we don't need him. We don't need that mofo. We got this. Did more damn than it. Oh, look at that. First ball. Oh, look at her go. Oh. I love a girl that just like knows. You know what I mean? Like, 
that's the that's that blood DK life. Like I've had people tell me like um you know, oh what healer do you want? I'm like, dude, I don't care what healer I have. You can bring another DPS. I don't give I don't give a fuck. Just it doesn't matter to me, man. I heal myself. She's got that hubris. I love to see it to be honest though, like I don't know. You should be nice to people and you know tanks are few and far between and the more inviting it seems as a role the more people might play it and so we might see a less tank disparage because it's hard to find tanks it's hard it's hard to find good tanks but i can definitely see if someone just is in a key and then just leaves or dc's that you're just like screw this so there is a spot you can cheese this whole thing if you run over here i can't really show it on the map right now but if you run when you pull there's a spot where you will force them to fight in close combat and then mega crash just doesn't really get on his bike at all and you just like cleave them down real fast If you haven't seen that before, um, I do have a key I will be posting soon of a plus plus 20 of the same thing where I did the cheese of this. And I'll show that. But just know it is a possibility where you can kind of put them in this like weird spot where like you get this boss done really fast. Man, Gavel does some serious work, huh? Okay, but we're we're handling this just fine. Sorry, checking my phone. I am also. It is one thirty-two a.m. Pacific time. I'm unwinding with a uh, a little white claw. Got me a little white claw surge, blood orange. They're not bad. If you guys aren't keeping up with my current events, I actually have a kidney disease. Uh, it's for life, and it's uh it's shitty, but you know, just gotta work through it. So, you know, I can't really eat many things or drink many things but you know every now and then i indulge in a, a beer here and there and my love or my passion is like more of like an ipa kind of thing but honestly white claws these like site these seltzers there's not much in them and uh you know it works out better for me right now at this period of time it does not replace a good IPA, but, you know, we make do. Tangent over. So there's really not much to say about these whole grunter things. They don't aggro to you. You can't really do much about it. You just fight it. Unfortunately, our Dancing Rune weapon stacks fell off a little premature. Yeah, you know, this is when the whole mini game of Tombstone would really come in clutch. But we are doing this for extra health. Like, look at her health. It's absolutely insane. Especially with Naya giving her extra health. It is a lot. So, and that does also count towards... Um, Oh, what's that thing called? Where you're at thirty percent life, you take like thirty percent less damage. Uh, Will the necropolis. The higher your life is, the higher that threshold is. So if you have one hundred k HP, at thirty k HP, 
that's when it comes into play. If you have 200k HP, you know what I mean? It comes at 60k. So there's just much more buffer of you dying and not. So high HP on a blood DK, it does feel pretty freaking boss. Um, when you're death striking and your HPS is like 30k <laughs> and your healer's like what the fuck man I can't do anything about this okay we got the bullies we have to really be careful of shockwave ooh your healer almost just bought the farm right there so you have to be really careful of shockwave She almost bought the farm again. I think Ashes is a girl, I'm assuming. That kind of name is usually a girl name. Not to sound male chauvinistic, but correct me if I'm wrong. So we gotta really be careful um, keeping that shockwave away from other players. It's going right on your... Okay, he moved out of the way, good. It was going right on the warlock. Selder has come online, guys. Did you know that? Okay, so this guy, he's a lot of AoE damage. People have to, like, not stand in things. And you can AMS this big shock that's going to happen. This charged smack. This charged smack. But you really don't want to do that. Because you want to be electrified to work the stuff. You know, you want all the pillars and the robot just going full on Beyblade every time. Generally, you can kind of call out what you're going to hit for that. Boom. Which one are you going for? You electrified. The schmacker. Okay, Gaba Max going good. He's kind of one of the scarier ones. And because you guys don't have one extra DPS, it kind of sucks. Like, doing a 20 with, like, without a DPS is a pretty big loss. All these bosses take longer, and the heals have to be pretty on point. You know, Ashes is, you know, credit to her or him. I really don't know. I'm assuming it's a girl. Credit to Ashes though. She's she's healing her freaking face off. You know, she does a very good job handling this group wide damage. You could I mean, it wouldn't hurt you to throw in an AMZ here though, for some of these uh these charge smacks. Just so the team takes less damage when they absorb it with you. But, Kaba Mac dies. We are all Gucci main. Man, you did 13k on that fight? I mean... I'm saying it in a surprising way because you have, like, no strength trinkets. But, the gavel is, like, really carrying you on that. So a gavel doesn't have any secondaries either, right? Like crit, mastery, versatility, that kind of stuff. I would be very interested to see what your stat weights are having like so little strength from those double non-strength trinkets. Like, you could probably get away with one non-strength trinket, but two, that's, that's a little, uh, that's a little, uh, nutty for me. I just noticed that guy who DC'd is Tom Hanks. Come on, man. Tom Hanks is a national treasure. How are you going to name yourself Tom Hanks and then just, like, not, oh, we're pulling all this. 
Okay. Yeah, this is different than what I do. But, I mean, it's good to get as many infiltrators as possible because of, like I said, haste scales amazingly in this dungeon specifically. What the hell is that? What is this? I do not know what that is. That looks like that looks like the slimy consumptive organ trinket, but it's not. The hell is that? I don't know. So Liz joined our Discord a while ago. And, you know, I don't know too much about her, but I am awfully proud. This is looking very good. I will say I would like to see more AMZ action. I think you've used it like once this whole dungeon, maybe twice. Correct me on that one too. And I don't see you really exploding your ghoul much. So I think... You do a great job of managing your cooldowns. AMZ could probably be used more, and the best way to know when to AMZ is just honestly having the damage types of weak aura, knowing when it's magic damage that you can just like help your team absorb, and exploding your ghoul. But your ghoul is a minor thing too. Like I said, you are like insanely too much defensive first and you might actually be hurting yourself with having two non-strength trinkets even when you think you're being more defensive I don't know like there's there wasn't a single point in this dungeon where you were in danger I can't think of a single point where I was like oh crap she could go down here no so um Either you need to start doing higher dungeons or you need to uh, reevaluate, I think, your talent slash um, gear trinket settings, like trinket situation. Because, I mean, like, 8.5k damage is not very high. I know you didn't have Dancing Moon weapon up yet. Like even with gavel, like some of your, some of your single target is like very low, and it's because you have no strength. Like, tier, gives us, dancing rune weapon uptime, but we also get, um. Oh, oh no, we also get stacks right the um the tier set stacks that happen those scale off your strength so we can get up to 40 percent increased strength so the higher your strength the higher that value happens that whole thing plays into our tier having higher strength okay we need to lust and we need to go hard we need lust like right now, like yesterday, like, oh my God, this needs to happen. Like, oh my God, where's the lust? www.wannabylust.com slash right now slash forward slash how come this hasn't happened yet dot jpeg. Oh, we don't have a lust. Our goddamn lust DC'd. Oh no. That would have been an easy two key. That would have been a plus plus 20 right there. Oh no. Wow. Tom Hanks, man. Letting us down again. First he dies in Saving Private Ryan. Spoilers. <laughs> now... He DCs and lets us down in this plus 20. How could he? 
for the situation, you're doing a great job. You're very quick on your feet, and you adapt to the situation fast. Oh no. How did that warlock just, just, just drop? Okay, we got a good macro to res. That's good. Strength is, oh, I can see strength right there. I got to look underneath the hair slash arm of the Nightborn avatar. 3201, that's with 40 stacks. Let's see what happens when the stacks drop off. Okay, we're at 3067. Okay. Yeah, you can't take the portal for the. Oh, no. Ashy's just going hard. Man. She is making a ham and cheese sandwich, and then she's eating it, and she's going ham sammy. That's supposed to be for the way back. Yeah, so one thing people do is right before it pops here, they just like run into one of the things to port them back fast. Did no one have drums? Even drums might have been a one phase, to be honest. Yeah. Drums would have even been in a, a one phase. Okay, so Death Strike is our best single target we have, so we need to be Death Striking like crazy. Okay, it's over. She got them all. It's over. Great job, by the way. This is a good key. And I know I kind of shit on some of your stuff, but to be honest, though, you're way higher than plus 20. Like, your skill is way higher than doing 20s. Hey, look at that. Asmongold on Wrath. To be honest, Asmongold is on the same frickin' server I joined. Which kind of sucks. Like, wait times are like forever. Anyways, it doesn't matter. That was Liz slash Goth Beans key. A lot of things went good. And, uh, See you guys in another one. Actually, I have another key review to do after this for another big supporter of the community. So we'll be looking at his after all this. But let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. Um, if you have any opinions. Liz, if you're here watching this, like, you know, I would be, I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts on this on this uh, combo and then this stuff like you're making some decisions here that are like directly counterintuitive to our tier set so I'd like to hear what you have to say about that anyways I will keep chugging along I'm sorry I haven't been around that much I've had a lot going on personally and um, yeah I will try my best to get back up on it and uh yeah thank you and i'll see you guys later